Hello friends, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new here. My name is Natalia Lee. I'm an indie author and the managing editor at Enchanted Ink Publishing. And I am back today with a super easy writing tips video. Today we're going to be talking about commas and I'm going to give you my top five tips for comma usage. Now I do want to preface this video by saying that there are so many rules and guidelines when it comes to comma usage that there's no way I could cover everything in a single video. And even if I tried, I don't think it would be a very uh, easily accessible video to many people. So I'm going to keep it simple today and we're going to talk about five comma tips that I think everybody can use in their manuscripts. Now, another thing I want to mention is that with most, if not all of the rules or tips we're going to be talking about today, these really are more like guidelines, especially when it comes to commas. Um, they can be used in some situations uh, a little bit free form, kind of depending on what your intentions are for your sentences and the point that you're trying to get across. But with that being said, I do still think it's helpful to understand these guidelines. Everything I'm going to be sharing with you today comes from the Chicago Manual of style, which is the style guide that I and most editors, especially in the US, are going to be using for fiction. Let's go ahead and dive into my top five tips for comma usage. Let's get started. All right, we are going to start with a super simple overview of what a comma is. Most of us already know this. And most of us have been taught that a comma is used to indicate a pause or a break in a sentence. And this can definitely help if you're not quite sure where you should be putting commas in your sentences, but it can also kind of lead you astray because not all of us pause naturally at the same places when we're speaking or writing. So I actually pulled a few quotes from CMOS or the Chicago Manual of Style to share with you. Now, according to Simos, quote, in formal prose, logical considerations come first. Effective use of the comma involves good judgment with the goal being ease of reading. So yes, we sometimes are going to use a comma where we're naturally kind of pausing, but there are other aspects to take into consideration as well. So let's go ahead and dive into tip number one for comma usage. All right, first and foremost, serial commas. These are also referred to as the Oxford comma. Um, some people really take a hard stance on this. I prefer the serial comma as does CMOS and I use the serial comma for all of my US based authors. Now items in a series are usually going to be separated by commas. I like apples, bananas, and grapes. We would use a comma after apples and then the comma after bananas is going to be our serial or Oxford comma. Now according to CMOS, when a conjunction joins the last two elements in a series of three or more, a comma, known as the serial comma, should appear before the conjunction. So let's go ahead and look at a quick example. I put on jeans, comma, a t-shirt, comma, and my favorite sneakers. So that comma that we're seeing after t-shirt, that is what is referred to as a serial or Oxford comma. And this comma can really help lend clarity to a sentence. Now, I'm also going to show you a funny photo that I found today of Rachel Ray. And what it says on here is, Rachel Ray finds inspiration in cooking her family and her dog. So you'll see that we are missing some commas here and it really confuses the meaning of the sentence. Now we know logically that Rachel Ray is not actually cooking her family or her dog, nor does she find inspiration in cooking her family and her dog, but without proper comma usage there, that is what it sounds like. It sounds like she takes inspiration in cooking her family members and her dog, but really we needed commas after cooking and family in order to really lend clarity to this sentence. So that is another example where you will want to be using these serial commas to ensure that your intention is getting across to your reader. So that was tip number one. All right, tip number two is to use commas in direct address, which means when you are referring to somebody by name or by title, or for example, let's say you're referring to a class of students and you're saying, listen up class. So when you are directly addressing somebody, you're going to want to set off that direct address with 
commas. I have a few examples here along with another funny photo that I saw so many years ago and that totally stuck in my mind. All right, so a couple examples are Elizabeth, it's time to go. So we have the name or the direct address Elizabeth at the start of the sentence here, followed immediately by a comma. And then the next example is, thank you, Sarah, for coming today. So again, the direct address is Sarah. And even though that comes in the, the middle of the sentence, we are going to set that name off with commas because what we're actually saying is, thank you for coming today. But then we are directly addressing Sarah in the middle of the sentence, hence those two commas setting that off. Now, my favorite example here is, let's eat grandma versus let's eat grandma. So you can see based on this photo that when we don't use a comma after eat, it comes out as in, we are going to eat our grandma. Let's eat grandma. Now, when we put that comma in after eat, it becomes a direct address. We are directly addressing our grandma and telling her, let's eat. So this is a photo that I literally saw so many years ago. I think about it all the time and if you need help remembering to use commas with direct address think of this photo and think of let's eat grandma versus let's eat grandma <laughs> and the importance of commas all right the third tip this is one that trips up a lot of people and i think it's because we are taught this in school even though it's not actually necessary and that is a comma before two at the end of a sentence when two is used in the case of also so for example you know i love my examples um i like chocolate cake too most of us were taught to put a comma after cake so we're taught if two comes at the end of a sentence we need to set it off with a comma but according to CMOS, the Chicago Manual of Style, that's unnecessary. And even though I don't have examples here, it is the same situation with either. So when either or two are used at the end of a sentence to mean also, you generally do not need to set those off with commas. However, this changes when that word to, for example, is showing up in the middle of a sentence and setting it off with commas is going to help lend clarity to what you're trying to say. I like chocolate cake too. We don't need a comma after cake because the reader understands that I'm saying I like chocolate cake also. But if we were going to switch up the sentence a little bit and say she too likes chocolate cake, we're going to set two off with commas, a comma both before and after two. And again, this is just to lend clarity to readers. All right, tip number four. This is a big one and it is commas with dialogue tags. This is one of the things that I see misused all the time in my editing work. And I actually have a couple videos on dialogue and dialogue tags. I'm going to link those videos down below. So if you know that you could use a bit more help or if you just wanna kind of sharpen your skills surrounding dialogue tags, you can check those out. So commas are often used to introduce a line of dialogue or at the end of a line of dialogue before a dialogue tag. Let's look at a couple examples. Elizabeth said, comma, let's get a bite to eat. Okay, I'd like to try that new pizza place, comma, Sarah replied. Now, this can get a little bit tricky when you are using action beats. I'd like to try that new pizza place. Sarah smiled, for example. So Sarah replied would be a dialogue tag. Sarah smiled would be an action beat. So with an action beat, you're not going to use a comma. Those are two totally distinct and separate sentences. Her dialogue is one sentence, and then her action is a totally different sentence. But when you are using a dialogue tag, such as said or replied, we are going to be using a comma. And it's also important to know that the comma goes inside the closing quotes. Some people think that they should be placing their commas on the outside of the closing quotes for dialogue tags, but those always need to go on the inside, nested right against the dialogue. And again, there are quite a few different like little rules and guidelines around dialogue tags. So make sure to check out those videos listed below for a few more tips if you are struggling with this, or again, just wanna sharpen your skills. All right, tip number five. This one is going to sound a little bit complex, but it's actually super simple. And that is using commas between independent clauses that are joined by a conjunction. Again, that sounds complex, but when you look at these examples, you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. So let's just dive in. All right, according to CMOS, quote, when independent clauses are joined by and, but, or, so, yet, 
or any other coordinating conjunction, a comma usually precedes the conjunction. Here are our examples. I went to the store to buy cake mix, but they were sold out. So our conjunction here is but, and you will see that it's preceded by a comma. Now these are two independent clauses. They can both stand alone. I went to the store to buy cake mix, period. That's a full sentence. It stands on its own. They were sold out. Another independent clause stands on its own. So when we have those two independent clauses, I went to the store to buy cake mix. They were sold out. We use a comma and that conjunction, but to connect them together. Our second example is Elizabeth ran down the stairs and Sarah followed her. So again, we have two independent clauses. Elizabeth ran down the stairs, Sarah followed her. Now we are using a comma and the conjunction and to connect those two independent clauses. This is something I see misused in my editing work all the time. So it is a big one to consider, but at the same time, CMOS even says in their chapter on this that if it is a very short sentence or if the ideas are very closely related, sometimes you can just do away with that comma. So this is another example where it helps to know the rule and to know, okay, if I have two independent clauses and I have that conjunction as well, I should be using a comma there. If you know that, then you can also decide and kind of determine whether or not you need to use that comma there or whether totally doing away with the comma would benefit the reading experience for your readers. So a lot of this comes down to uh, readability and clarity for readers, but then also what your intentions are. So those are my top five tips when it comes to commas. Again, there are so many rules and guidelines when it comes to commas that I don't think I could even cover them all. The Chicago Manual of Style has so many guidelines when it comes to commas that you could spend the better part of the day just reading it and trying to really take in all the information. So there's no way for me to cover literally everything. And again, it changes depending on the situation and depending what you're trying to communicate. But I think by learning even these top five tips and knowing when to utilize them, it is really going to clean up your writing and help give you a better grasp on the comma. So if you have any questions about comma usage, feel free to pop them in the comments down below and I'll try to help out. Um, I will also kind of pin any comments that are especially relevant. So if somebody asks a question that I think will really be helpful to other people, I'll go ahead and pin it down there so that you can easily find it. But again, feel free to ask comma questions down below and you can also leave any suggestions for future videos in those comments. I do want to mention that we are having a summer formatting sale via Enchanted Ink Publishing right now. So if you are looking for a formatter for your manuscript, you can come visit us at www.enchantedinkpublishing.com. We also offer a variety of editing and design services to help you publish the best book you possibly can. All right, everybody, thank you so much for watching this video today. Again, leave questions, comments, and suggestions for new videos down below and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!